Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer DIY repair and upgrade videos. In this video today, I'm working on a Toshiba computer and I'm gonna show you how to fix a problem of when you try to start the computer, you're getting a boot device not found error or no boot device, boot device not installed, something like that, and it's preventing your computer from booting up correctly to Windows. Before we get going guys, a quick shout out to my sponsor that makes a lot of my videos possible, NiceHash. NiceHash is a one-stop shop for all things crypto and the world's largest hash power marketplace. If you're an experienced crypto user or if you're new and inexperienced and are curious about how crypto and Bitcoin work, the best way to do it is to try mining with NiceHash. You can mine on their website through their easy mining without any hardware or any experience by buying small packages, an hour, two hours, whatever you want to get and trying to hit a block. You can also group up with other people to increase the power of your package. I'll fill you in more at the end of the video or you can check them out here. So now let's get into the project. The first thing I'm gonna have you guys do is shut your computer off, make sure it's completely off. I'm gonna have you go into BIOS and check some issues and settings that could be preventing your computer from starting. That's where we're gonna start our troubleshooting. Okay guys, so now that your computer is powered off, I'm gonna have you hit the power button and then immediately start tapping on F12. So power, start tapping on F12. For most Toshiba computers, it will be F12. If F12 doesn't work for you, try the other function keys because some models are different. But again, most will be F12. And you'll see a menu that will look something like this. So not all bio systems will look exactly the same, uh, but many will look somewhat similar to this. The first thing I'm gonna have you do is scroll down. Uh, some of you may have the use of your mouse as I do. Uh, if so, you can use that. If not, use your arrow keys or your tab keys. And if you can't find use of anything to navigate, try plugging in an external USB mouse. But I'm going to have you go down here to enter setup. Hit enter. And the first thing we're going to troubleshoot is your system date and time up here. Make sure this system date and time is correct. If it's not correct, it could be affecting the way BIOS runs, which could also affect whether your Windows can boot up correctly or not. It sounds like a small thing, but it can really mess your computer up. So first thing you're gonna do, make sure your system time and system date is correct. If it's not correct and you have to change it, change it, make it correct, hit save and exit down in the bottom right, and then try starting your computer up again. If this solves your problem and your computer starts normally after this, then great, you're all set. It could have just been a one-time error. If, however, you have to come back here every time you start your computer to change the system date and time because it's always incorrect, that could be a sign that your motherboard and BIOS is losing power when your computer turns off, which is not supposed to happen. There's a component on your motherboard called the CMOS battery that's supposed to maintain power to BIOS even when the computer's off. If you're having to change your system date and time every time you start your computer, it could be a sign that that component has died and it needs to be replaced. There'll be a video link below in the description showing you how to access a CMOS battery in your computer to replace it if that is the case. The next thing I'm gonna have you change, guys, if this turns out to not be the issue, if you change your date and time, you save and exit, you try to restart your computer, and it still is having issues starting up, come back in here to BIOS, check your date and time. If the correct date and time was saved and the computer still can't boot up, we know that's not the issue. The next thing I'm gonna have you check, come down to your bottom left under advanced, we'll click on that. And then down here, you see the word diagnostic. Again, not all BIOS systems are the same. You may have to look around your BIOS, your different tabs, uh, main, security, power management. You may have to click on these and look around, but try to find it right here where it says diagnostic. That's what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and click on that. Now that we're in the diagnostic utility, you'll see two different tests, a hard drive or solid state drive. Sometimes you'll see that referred to as storage. It's the same thing. And then you'll see a memory test. Try running both of these, more specifically your hard drive, solid state drive, or your storage. Run that test. Um, this way it'll diagnose whether your hard drive is healthy or not, which is a very common reason for the issue you're seeing where your computer's not booting up. You can get several responses from the hard drive or storage test. 
Um, if you get a response saying that the hard drive is tested and failed, or the hard drive is bad, sometimes you'll see a red X on the hard drive. That basically means that your hard drive is, is bad and it needs to be replaced. If the test comes back showing your hard drive is not installed or not available, or it can't read it for any reason, that could also mean that your hard drive is bad, but it could also mean that the hard drive has just come loose. Uh, maybe it needs to be what we call reseated. Um, possibly your computer had a hit or a fall, or, or, or just through normal jostling, it's come loose. Sometimes components just come loose. You would need to reseat the hard drive. Also, if you don't have this diagnostic test ability, some computers do not come with this capability, so you won't even be able to access this option. In that case, as well as if your hard drive is not able to be scanned in this test or it shows as not installed, you would want to next reseat the hard drive, the physical hard drive. Try unplugging it and plug it back in. I'll play a clip now for you showing how you can do that. So for the sake of an example, I have another laptop computer flipped over here. I'm using this computer because it has an easy access panel. Uh, for the video, it's a lot easier to get into this. Your computer may or may not have one of these. Many computers do, some do not. If you have to take off your entire bottom case because you don't have one, it's a little more complicated, but it's doable. Uh, send me a comment with what brand and model number computer you have, and I can help you get into your computer. Uh, usually you would just unscrew screws that go around it. Uh, sometimes they're under the rubber feet and you would take off your bottom case. For me, it's a little easier. I'm just gonna pop up this little access thing right here, unscrew my single screw that's holding in this panel, and I just pop this panel out like that. So again, it's a lot easier if your computer has an easy access panel. Another thing to look for, guys, you see my computer is sitting on an anti-static pad. Either a pad like this or an anti-static bracelet is a really good idea to limit the chance of harm you can do your computer when entering it. If you guys need a list of supplies, I'm also using a screwdriver and a plastic pry tool. If you guys have any questions on supplies, check out the link above in the video. Um, it'll be a supply tools list that I use here in the shop. So to reseat a hard drive or unplug it and plug it back in, usually hard drives, solid state drives, they're held in by a caddy. We're gonna unscrew that caddy. And again, this computer ha has two hard drives. Most likely, a lot of you guys, your computer will only have one. But we're gonna do the one with the operating system on it if you have two. Gonna unscrew the caddy. And then we're gonna slide the hard drive away from its port and take it fully out. Make sure that it's held in securely into the caddy. It's not loose, there's actually a, a, a little bit of wiggle there. So I'm gonna tighten my hard drive screws in the caddy. And then I'm gonna set my hard drive back in, make sure it's lined up correctly and give it a good push right into the port. And then I'm gonna screw it back in. That's what we do to reseat a hard drive to make sure that a plug-in connection issue is not the reason why the computer won't see it. So that's how you would reseat a hard drive in two different situations. One, you run the diagnostic scan and it shows the hard drive is uninstalled or unavailable. Or the second situation is you don't have diagnostic equipment or diagnostic testing capability rather, and you can't run that test. Uh, now you've seen how to reseat the hard drive. The other situation is that you scan your hard drive and it comes back healthy. Uh, then you know that the hard drive is good. Uh, most likely at that point, it's just an operating system issue. At that point, we wanna rule out one other cause in BIOS that could be affecting this problem. We're gonna exit this test. We're gonna hit close. Now we're back at our main screen in BIOS. Another thing I'm gonna have you check in BIOS, it's, it's a last thing we'll look for. I'm gonna come down to my advanced tab on the left. And then on the right, I'll come down to system configuration and hit enter. And then I'm gonna go all the way down to here where it says boot mode, UEFI boot. Again, just like before, you may need to look around your tabs to find this, uh, but in my computer, it's on, under the advanced tab. Um, here, you'll see UEFI boot, you may see legacy, um, but you'll see one of those options. Basically, your computer can be set to either. If your computer is unable to boot, what you would wanna do is you'd wanna change this from whatever it is to whatever it's not. So if you're seeing legacy boot as the setting that you have in place, you wanna change that to UEFI 
save and exit, try booting the computer up. In my case, it says UEFI boot. I would try to save it to legacy, save and exit, and boot. If you're like me and this option is grayed out, meaning I can't click on this and change it, so you can't change it from UEFI to legacy, or you can't change it from legacy to UEFI because it's grayed out, you have to go back in, explore these tabs, and find out where the secure boot is enabled. I know that if I go into my security tab on the left, you'll see it here, secure boot, and it's been enabled. So that's what you would be looking for, the secure boot option. You would then click on this, disable it, and then you'll be able to change that from UEFI to legacy or from legacy to UEFI. Once you're able to do that, guys, save and exit, try starting the computer up again. If that doesn't work, then we've kind of ruled out a lot of things in BIOS that it could be safe to say your, your BIOS is okay. So in the event that this problem is not BIOS related and it's not hard drive related because your hard drive passed the diagnostic scan, or you don't have diagnostic scan options and you can't actually confirm your hard drive is healthy either way, we're gonna move on to the operating system now. While you're in BIOS, try to navigate around, see if you can find any options to repair, restore the operating system, or perhaps maybe before this whole problem started, you had a Windows update, maybe a failed Windows update. In that case, see if you can find any options in BIOS to undo or uninstall last update. That's your best bet for fixing the operating system from BIOS. If those options don't work or if you don't have access to them or can't find them in your BIOS, the next step would be to try reinstalling the operating system. If your hard drive is healthy, you should be able to successfully reinstall it. And if you can't scan your hard drive to confirm it's healthy, this will let you know if it is or not. If the install fails, it's probably due to your hard drive. At that point, I would replace it. But again, if the install is successful, then you fix your computer. But I will have a video link here showing you how to install Windows 10 onto a Toshiba computer. If you prefer Windows 11, there'll be a video link here showing you how to install Windows 11 onto a Toshiba computer. But that's it for this troubleshooting video. Uh, I've showed you how to troubleshoot BIOS, the hard drive, the hardware, uh, and the operating system. Hopefully one of those three things ends up being the case. Please leave me a question if you have any. Also check out the FAQs below in the description. It may save you some time getting an answer. I do try to keep those up to date. And now guys, as promised, a few extra words on my sponsor, NiceHash. As mentioned before guys, NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. It's a one-stop shop for all things crypto from wallets to exchanges to research tools on what various cryptocurrencies are doing. You can hook up your own mining rigs to it, your own computers, get paid to rent out that unused space to other crypto miners. And what's especially cool is if you have any questions about crypto, if you want to start learning the world of Bitcoin a little better, you can start mining right from their site with no hardware needed. You can use their easy mining software. You can buy packages ranging from an hour, two hours, four hours or more, and you can try to hit a block. To increase your chances, you can team up with many other people online to increase the power of that mining package. There's a lot of great resources on the site. It's a really fun, fascinating world to start dabbling in. Leave me a question if you have it, or check out this link for more information. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.